Hey, geometers, welcome back. Today we have a lesson on CPCTC. We have both problems and proofs. CPT CPCTC is one of the coolest things that you'll learn in geometry. It's also one of the simplest concepts. And you're wondering to yourself right now, what the heck does CPCTC mean? Before I tell you, we have to do a little review. Okay, so recall that two polygons are congruent if and only if a rigid motion or composition of rigid motions maps one polygon on top of the other. So if they can fit right on top of each other, okay, then they're congruent. And um, when you get that, when you have two congruent polygons, there's a couple things that result. Okay, what do you get from that? Well, one thing is that all the corresponding parts are going to be congruent. Okay, and what are the parts? They're the sides and the angles of the polygons. So to keep things simple, in this video, I'm gonna stick to the simplest polygons of all, and that is triangles, okay? So recall this lesson, um, this slide from a lesson uh, previously. Okay, so what did we do? In this lesson, we said, okay, well, these two triangles are congruent. We know that these two triangles are congruent. So can you match up all the corresponding angles and all the corresponding sides, meaning all the corresponding parts, right? So there's six parts, three angles and three sides, and you were able to just kind of go through and match them up. And you can do it both visually by looking at the diagram. Well, let's look at the angles. One congruence mark, one congruence mark, two, two, three, three. Same thing with the sides. One congruence mark, one congruence mark, two, two, three, three. So you can do it visually, but you could also, I taught you how to do it by just evaluating this congruence statement because that's in the correct order. Angle J matches with T, K matches with S, L matches with R, also side JK matches with side TS, et cetera, et cetera, okay? So this is just that information, okay? So here's our new concept, CPCTC. CPCTC is actually just an acronym. It's just an acronym. And it stands for corresponding parts of congruent triangles are, what do you think? Corresponding parts of congruent triangles are, that's right, congruent, okay? Let's see who can say that the fastest, okay? You're gonna race with me when I say go. You're gonna say corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. On your mark, get set, go. Corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. Did you beat me? I hope you did. Okay, so now how do we use examples? Like what are the types of problems? Well, there's quite a variety of types of problems that um, you're gonna be asked for with CPCTC, okay? But all of the problems, no matter how they phrase the question, what they're really wanting you to do is they're wanting to see if you can um, just match up all the different pieces, all the congruent corresponding parts, and they're gonna ask you in different ways but basically all you're doing is just matching up the cor corresponding congruent parts of two polygons, okay? So for example, go ahead and pause the video. Um, well, hang on, let me read the instructions. So you're gonna have like questions one, two, and three. You'll have these diagrams and it'll say, examine the diagram and make a congruence statement. And really what they're asking you to do is, can you match up all the corresponding congruent parts? So now go ahead and pause the video and write down your answers, please. Okay, so hopefully for number one, you got something like triangle GFJ congruent to triangle JHG. For number two, I got triangle ABC congruent to triangle CDA. For number three, I got triangle ABC congruent to triangle XYZ. Now. Are these the only correct answers? No, these are just one correct answer for each, each one of these problems. You could have gotten three totally different answers, but be correct also, okay? So for example, let's look at number three, this sort of easy diagram, right? I just happened to look at this first triangle and call it triangle ABC. Okay, you didn't have to do that, okay? You could have called this triangle BAC, okay? Well, how would you match BAC with this? Then what would you put over here? Well, B, A, C, then you would have put triangle Y, X, Z to match, right? Or you could have, maybe you called this triangle C, A, B. So C, A, B, then you would have called this Z, X, Y, right? So it really doesn't matter what order you go in with the first triangle, as long as these vertices are in the correct order so that the vertices match up, the corresponding parts match up. 
All right, so here's another type of problem, okay? And it's basically asking you the same thing. Can you just match up all the corresponding congruent parts, okay? And in this one, it basically just says, name all the corresponding parts of the congruent triangles. So you're given that these two triangles are congruent. Can you just match all six corresponding parts, all the angles and all the sides? Go ahead and pause the video and do these real quick, please. All right, so hopefully you got this for the angles and sides, okay? Now, I taught you how to evaluate this both visually and by evaluating the congruent statement. Visually, looking at this, you can simply match up, and those strong visual learners, you can see that you would have to just do what? Reflect this and slide it over, okay? And maybe rotate it a little bit, okay? And that would be your composition of rigid motions, okay? Um, those of you that can't just do that rigid motion with your eyes, you can't just visually just do the transformation, that's okay. Okay, look for the congruence marks. You have one congruence mark here, one congruence mark. So clearly angle C matches with angle Z, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, but also I taught you how to evaluate this congruence statement. Okay, A matches with X, B matches with Y, C matches with Z, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, let's move on. Proofs, yay, proofs using CPCTC. Okay. So these sound, maybe they sound a little intimidating or complicated, but these are the easiest proofs in the world. And I'll tell you why, because these are really just triangle congruence proofs, just kind of hiding, okay? You're gonna know it's a CPCTC proof. It won't tell you, use CPCTC. It'll never tell you what reason to use, okay? But you'll know that you have a CPCTC proof if it asks you, if it shows you a diagram of two um, triangles, okay, it could be any polygon, but I'll just tell you they're going to stick to triangles with proofs just to make it simpler for you, okay? But if you have a diagram of two triangles and you're asked to prove that a part of a triangle is congruent to a corresponding part of another triangle, that's when you know you have a CPCTC proof, okay? And what do I mean by a part? It's either an angle is congruent to an angle or a side is congruent to a side. That is definitely a CPCTC proof, okay? The strategy for this is really there's just one strategy. All you have to do is just prove that the two triangles are congruent, just like you did in the previous lessons. And how do you prove that two triangles are congruent? Use the shortcuts SSS, SAS, ASA, AAS, or HL. Okay, go ahead and just do that normal proof conclude that the two triangles are congruent, and then the very next step is just your statement would be whatever part is congruent that they asked you to prove, and your reason for that last step is just CPCTC. You don't have to write out those words. You don't have to write out corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. You just simply write for your reason CPCTC. So let me show you with a couple simple proofs. So here's this proof. Let's go ahead and do this proof right here. Okay, so you're given three things, okay? A side is congruent to a side, an angle is congruent to an angle, a side is congruent to a side. So they actually gave you everything you need, okay? But look at the proof statement. They've asked you to prove that a part is congruent to a part. Angle A and angle X, we don't know that those are congruent yet because there's no congruence mark given. It's not given. So our strategy is simply prove that the two triangles are congruent, okay? Do that first, and then your very next step is just that, hey, well, angle A must be congruent to angle X because those are corresponding parts of two congruent triangles, okay? So the proof is actually very, very simple. Okay, first we put the three givens, and again, I gave you the SAS. I didn't want you to spend too much time, you know, worrying about how to do the triangle congruence proof. Okay, I just wanted to show you the CPCTC, okay? So we can actually conclude in our very next step that triangle ABC must be congruent to triangle XYZ, that is SAS. And then here is how you write the, CP, the, the final step, CPCTC, right here. You just write whatever you're asked to prove, angle A congruent to angle X, and your reason is just CPCTC. That's all you have to do. So what is our strategy? Prove that the two triangles are congruent, and then just state whatever part they're looking for and your reason is just CPCTC. So let's do another proof that's a little bit harder. Okay, and now I have a bow tie proof, okay? This bow tie took me a long time to draw, so I hope you appreciate it, okay? 
Um, okay, so we're given two things now. We're given a congruent side, segment DS, congruent to segment FS, okay? and we're also given parallelism. We're given that this segment is parallel to this segment. Okay, so both of those givens are actually marked in the diagram. If you're given two things or something up here but it's not marked in the diagram, remember one of your strategies while you're doing proofs is always mark while you're going along, right? All right, so our strategy is to prove that, do you like these, these uh, letters that I put? DHS congruent to FMS. You know what I should have done? I should have put, a, I should have put WHS or WMS. Well, I don't know. I guess that wouldn't work. But anyways, or I could have put WMS right here. But either way, it's either FMS or WMS. It doesn't matter. This is just what I happen to choose. Okay. So step one, what are you going to do? You don't always have to do it this way, but I like to start with the givens, okay? So I put both givens in one step, okay? You can put these as two steps, step one and step two, or you can put both givens in one step. I just happen to put them both in the first step because they have the same reason. Step two, AIAs, our favorite two lines cut by transversal, right? Angle D, congruent to angle F, and angle H, congruent to angle M. Now check out this animation. You're going to love this. Boom. I made, the, I made the little arcs for you. And that's what you should be drawing as you go along. Oh, I messed up. This, these should have two arcs. My bad. I'll fix that later. But they shouldn't all have one arc. That's a mistake because when they all have one arc, that's saying all four angles are congruent. This should have two arcs, and this should have two arcs to distinguish them. So my bad, sorry. Also, this could have been separated into two separate steps. I combined them because it's AIA for both of them. Now you can conclude that triangle DHS truly is congruent to triangle FMS. And what is that? That's AAS, okay? Because the side is not the included side. Now, could you have done this as an ASA proof? Sure you could, okay? How would you do this as an ASA proof? Well, if you use angle D and angle F, and then you use vertical angles up here, okay? Then you could have done it as an ASA proof. Again, there's not just one way to do every single proof. Many of these problems, that one, one of the things that's really nice about them is that there's more than one way to approach the problem. Anyways, we have proven that the two triangles are congruent. Now what do we do? We simply write our conclusion, okay? Side SH or segment SH must be congruent to segment SM because those are corresponding parts of two congruent triangles. All right, guys, hope you enjoyed the video. Enjoy using CPCTC. You have two worksheets that um, this, this video lesson will help you with. All right, see you in the next video.